hey, I wanted to show you this uh, little formula that I came up with, and this is probably nothing new. I'm, I can't be the first person to think of this because there are a lot of these sprays now that are on the market for wafer paper to keep them flexible. And most of them, I was looking at the ingredients, most of them have some kind of a flavoring in them. I don't see the point in that personally because it's, you know, it's, it's just another thing to add, but you can put flavoring in if you want. But the basic ingredients for most of them are some kind of a softener, which would be glycerin or the propylene glycol, which is in everything, antifreeze, food, it's everywhere. Um, I don't have a you know stash of propylene glycol sitting around my house, so I use glycerin. This is just Wilton glycerin, and you can get that at any craft store. And then I used gelatin, two ingredients, and water, and that's it. So basically three ingredients. Um, I lied. Now what this does, you want to use one packet of gelatin, which is a, a little less than a tablespoon. So this is like one scant tablespoon, but it's not, this isn't necessarily something you need to be super precise with. One fourth cup of cold water, you bloom the gelatin in the water, just sprinkle it on top, let it sit for 15 minutes until it's completely absorbed, and then heat it in the microwave. When that comes out, you want to do like 15 minute bursts on high so that it melts it, but it doesn't boil it. You don't want to boil gelatin. When it comes out, you can either take the little, you know, the little white scum off the top or not with a spoon. You don't, I didn't, and it still works. So um, you can remove that. Take two, two tablespoons of glycerin and mix it in and that's it. And what it gives you is a mix that you can brush on to wafer paper. And this is this is actually my little stash of it. It will solidify, and you can keep this in the fridge. This this is four times as much as what I'm talking about. So the recipe that I gave you is going to make one fourth of this amount, which is probably about half a cup. You know, it's it's a little going to be a little more over, a little a little more, maybe three eighths of a cup. It's not going to be a half a cup. It'll be under that. Um, but it's 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 interesting because the first bunch that I did, I used too much glycerin. So I used, I think, more glycerin than gelatin. And this is sticky. See, it's just sticking to my hand. But it does make the wafer paper really flexible. But it remains sticky. And that's because the glycerin is sticky. That's a softener. So I reduced the amount of glycerin. This is number two. And this is still sticky, but it's not as sticky as the first one. And I did these yesterday. And the wafer paper is still just as flexible as it was yesterday. And I just took a paintbrush and brushed it on. I, a lot of these things are sold in spray bottles, but would, I guess you could do that, but the, I would think that the gelatin would gum up the spray bottle. So if you're gonna use that, make sure the spray bottle doesn't have any metal parts and you can just stick it in the microwave and try to remelt it as long as it's all plastic. This was the third one. And this I think was the most successful one. This is the formula that I, that I gave you. The paper is very flexible. You can, you know, move it around, pleat it, blah, blah, blah. But it's not as sticky. It's hardly, it doesn't stick to my hand. So these two do, that one will stay. This one is the most sticky of all. And that has the most glycerin. So it's one package of gelatin, one fourth cup of water and two tablespoons of glycerin. You might be able to reduce the amount of glycerin, but I think this one works for me. And I, if, if it's, I think if there's less glycerin, it might be a little too brittle. And just for you know comparison, this is an untreated piece and it is bending, but it's also curling. It's not gonna, if I tried to fold it like that, it's gonna crack. It's not pleatable. See what it's doing, it's cracking. So that little combination makes it um, flexible. Now, this piece I did this morning and instead of painting on the front, because what happens when you paint anything on the front it kind of drags the color if there's a lot of color. This is a very dark color. And it's, I can see, see on the yellow, it's kind of smeared some of the green from this background into the yellow. So I decided to paint the back. And when I print, I print on the front side, which is the smooth side. The back side is the rougher side of the paper. And when I painted the stuff on the rougher side of the paper, it made it curl. I might have just put too much on, so I'm adding too much moisture to it. But it made the paper a little more curly see it's it's like buckling a little bit that could just be too much moisture but if you paint it on the front on the smooth side it doesn't do that 
or it didn't do that for me. It might not do it for you if you don't put as much on. So try that out. It's very, it's very cheap. It's easy to make. And I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing that I could sell, but I'm not going to because it's so easy to make. There's no reason to charge people for it. So like I said, one package of gelatin, which is a little less than a tablespoon, one fourth cup of cold water, bloom the gelatin in the cold water, melt it in the microwave, 15 second bursts on high, and then add two tablespoons of glycerin. And that's it. Mix it up, store it. When you need it, reheat it in the microwave until it melts and just brush it on your paper. And it'll, you know, it'll, it makes the wafer paper, it makes it move without, look, I'm crumpling it up. It's not breaking. It's not doing anything. Oh, look. Wow. I'm really crumpling it up now. It's inside my hand. I couldn't do this to real wafer paper or just regular untreated. It's, it's quite amazing. So very simple. And if you wanted to add a flavoring, you could, but just to make flowers and stuff, that's a real easy way to do it.